Good evening. Good evening to each of you. I'm trying to get my phone here. There we go. There we go. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. I am Dr. Corrine Johnson. And I would like to welcome each of you on tonight to teach me how to love you, uh, Global Marriage Ministry. And once again, I am Dr. Corrine Johnson, your certified marriage relationship coach. And on tonight, um, we are going to um, be doing a teaching on tonight about loving your spouse when you want to walk away loving your spouse even when you desire to walk away from the marriage and so on tonight we know that there are thousands of couples all over the globe everywhere that are literally struggling um in their marriages and for you that's watching on tonight, you you may be one of those um, people that's struggling to stay in your marriage when deep down on the inside, you know that you want to walk away. You know that you want to leave. You know that you've had enough. Um, some of you all that are watching on tonight, you've been married for five years. Some of you for 15 years, some of you for, you know, um, 25 years. And when you enter into the marriage, you enter in with a lot of high hopes um, for the marriage. But a lot of you are saying, well, you know, when I enter in, you know, I didn't expect to have to come into this marriage and be miserable um, within the marriage. As a matter of fact, you dreamed, you know, that because you were already somewhat happy before you got married that once you said I do that the marriage was going to only um enhance that happiness that you were already um experiencing um before you got married so in every case you know um we sometimes anticipate that marriage is going to be a road that's going to lead us to an upward place, that it's going to be um, something that's going to lead us into a place of joy and peace and, and happiness. And sometimes we get to the point to where that's not the case in our marriage. And because of that, um, sometimes we um, become desperate for answers and solutions that, you know, we're not able to grab hold of, you know. And then sometimes it may seem like that when we're going through in our marriage, it's like those are the times when God is really quiet and, and he's not really saying anything to us, but we're so desperate for an answer as to do I stay? Oh, Lord, do I do I walk away from this thing? I've been in it for 25 years and, and nothing is changing. You know, he's not changing. You know, Lord, what do I do? And so we have to understand that, you know, a lot of times, even though we're in that position to where we really don't know what we want to do or we think that we want to walk away, a lot of times we probably don't really even want to even consider the word divorce. And for many of us, a lot of us don't want to divorce because of, you know, religious beliefs. Some of us don't want to walk away and divorce because you know, there are children that are involved in the relationship and that motivates you to want to stay even in the midst of the chaos and the confusion um, that's going on. And, and, and then there are other times when, you know, it seems like there are some days that things may be looking a little bit better. And so you begin to grab hold to some hope that, you know, maybe, you know, that it's going to get better. But then the next week, you know, it's back to business as usual. And, and so in any way, we must understand that even though we are dealing with issues, um, even though we may feel that, you know, we've tried to deal with these issues, you know, to be able to keep the marital union 
in our marriage. But most of us are discouraged with the results because many a times we're really trying to, to, to keep the marital union together, but it becomes discouraging because of the disunity that's within um, the marriage. And not only because you feel like you're not getting results in, in your effort to try to save the marriage. So uh, many a times we've read books, um, we, we, we've we wished, you know, that our spouse, you know, would read the book, you know, so that maybe it's something that the author of that particular book would say that would cause him to be in a place to where he would begin to change, you know, the way that he acts, the way um, that he gets angry, the way that you know, he has no self-control when it comes to certain things. A lot of times we just wish, you know, God, I wish my husband would read this book and, and that it would bring about some type, you know, of change uh, in your in your marriage. You know, and a lot of times when we suggest different things as wise, you know, sometimes some of us are met with silence, you know. And, and so a lot of times we become discouraged because we're trying to control particular things in the marriage. You know, there's a particular outcome that we want to see because we're so desperately in need to see some change um, within our marriage. And, and so we have to understand that a lot of times the problem that exists in our marriage, you know, it, it's not going to be solved by necessarily um, sitting down and, and what I would say, having a nice chat. But these problems, because many of them are like cancer, they, they eat away at the vitality of our marriages. And the issues vary from couple to couple, but the intensity of the pain runs deep for each particular couple. And so we find ourselves in a place to where we're loving our husbands, we love them, but we're, we're, we're at a crossroad to where we're like, you know, God, you know, I, I've been in this thing for 15 years, for 20 years, and it seems like the change has been little. So, you know, how do I love him when what I really want to do is I want to walk away. I'm ready to go. You know, I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. I'm tired of being in this. How do I stay? Well, throughout the next series, you know, we're going to be doing this series um, for probably the next four or five Mondays. And, and so throughout this series, I'm going to be teaching you how to deal with a spouse who is irresponsible, how to deal with a spouse that's a workaholic, a spouse who may be controlling, you know, uncommunicative, a spouse that may be verbally, physically, or sexually abusive, unfaithful, or depressed, you know, a spouse who is an alcoholic or a drug user. Throughout these next series, I want to begin to give you some tools and some strategies on how to deal with difficult types of spouses because we're, you know, we, we all have different struggles, you know, we all have different things that we're praying about that we may see, you know, that, that our husbands are, are, are doing that, that that's not good or, or that's sin. And so I, I want to begin to give you some strategy on how to begin to deal with what we see. And so I want you to know that I am under no illusion on tonight that, you know, I can provide any type of a magic form formula to bring healing to, you know, everybody's marriage. But but I do believe that that based on my own experience in counseling and, and research in the field of marriage, you know, and sound moral principles that there is hope for the for the most difficult um, marriages, um, you know, that, that exist. You know, I believe that there's hope because if there's breath in your body, then that means that there's hope. There's hope because God can change anybody at any point in time. And we have to keep that at the forefront of our mind that it's God that does the changing. It's God that does the delivering. And so I believe that in every troubled marriage, 
that one or both partners can take positive steps that have the potential for changing the emotional climate in the marriage. So in due time, spouses can find answers to your problems. So for most couples, you know, the ultimate solution will depend not only on your actions, but also on the support of the religious and therapeutic community in your city. But I'm going to say it again that there is hope for lasting solutions, even though you may be experiencing some trouble in your marriage. So a lot of times the reason why trouble shows up is because some of the time we are being held captive to different myths. You know, first, you know, we have to begin to look hard at what we believe about marriage because, you know, that that's a part of reality living. That's a part of practicing reality living. So reality living begins by identifying myths that have held you captive. And then it, then it begins to accept them for what they are, that they are myths and not truths. So you can begin to break their bonds as you begin to base your actions on truth rather than myths. So reality living means that you take responsibility for your own thoughts, for your own feelings, for your own actions. It requires you to appraise your life situation honestly and refuse to shift the blame for your unhappiness to others. Because a lot of times as wives, we like to shift the reality that we're not happy and we like to blame our husbands about the fact that we're not happy. When the fact of the matter is, your happiness should not be in the hands of another person. Your happiness is totally dependent upon you. It, it, it's an attitude. It's, it's not necessarily a feeling. It's an attitude that's going to make that's gonna make a conscious decision to say, this joy that I have, my husband didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. My children didn't give it to me. And they not going to take it away. It's an attitude when it comes down to happiness. And, and so I, I want to give you four statements on tonight that are myths. They are myths, but they have become truths in many of our marriages. The first thing that I want to talk about is my environment determines my state of mind. That's a myth. The second myth is people cannot change. The third myth on tonight is in a desperate marriage, you only have two options, resigning yourself to a life of misery or getting out of the marriage. And the fourth myth is some situations are hopeless and my situation is one of these. And, and so we have to understand that all four statements that I just read are literally myths. But unfortunately, unfortunately on tonight, there are many people that are in desperate marriages that base their lives on these commonly held myths. And those who accept any of the four myths that I just read will act accordingly so that their actions become a part of the problem rather than part of the solution. And so on tonight, we want to look at the outcome of accepting and acting on each of these myths that I just named. So the first myth on tonight is my environment determines my state of mind. So, so the commonly held view of our day is that we are the victims of our environment. And, and this myth is expressed in the following statement. You know, we begin to hear statements like, you know, well, if I grew up in a loving, supporting family, then I'm going to be a loving and supportive person. 
Or we hear statements like, you know, if I grew up in a dysfunctional family, then I'm destined to failure, you know, in relationships because my I come from a family of, you know, dysfunction. This kind of approach to your marriage and life, it renders you helpless, you know, because it prompts feelings of hopelessness and oftentimes it leads to depression. So in a desperate marriage, this victim mentality leads a spouse to conclude that my life is miserable and my only hope is the death of my spouse or divorce. So many people literally, let's just be real, they dream about both of them. So, so we must understand on tonight that yes, our environment certainly affects who we are. They certainly um, affect who we are, but it does not have to control your life. So rather than being a helpless victim, you can overcome an environment, even an environment that has a lot of obstacles, you can still overcome it. So in other words, your environment may influence you, but it need not dictate or destroy your marriage and your life. I've seen a lot of people and I know it's hard to maneuver from these things. You know, I, I, I've seen people that have grew up in dysfunctional homes where, you know, the daddy was an alcoholic and, and the daddy, you know, abused the mama all the time. I've seen men and women escape these type of childhood environments and still, you know, seek a place of wholeness and come out and be something totally different than what they're, than the environment that they grew up in. Yes, most of the time, we are products of our environment, but we don't have to be. We don't have to be victims. We can be victors. So the number, the two, the second myth on tonight is that people cannot change. And I know for a lot of the wives that are watching me on tonight, you probably saying, whoop, whoop, that's so true because my husband can't change. He ain't going to change. He's been the same the whole while I've been married to him and he's not going to change. But I want to let you know that that is a myth on tonight. And this myth asserts that once people reach adulthood, you know, there are personality traits or behavior patterns that are set in concrete. So those who believe this type of myth, if you believe this as a wife, you know, that, that, the, that what your spouse is demonstrating, a, a certain type of behavior, because he's been demonstrating it for a long period of time, that they're always going to act that way and that they're always going to be that way. You know, as a wife, you cannot assume that about your husband. You, you, you know, you got to begin to assume the best. You know, uh, a wife can, can assume you know, that, that, you know, my, my husband is always, you know, he irresponsible with money. You know, he just go out and buy cars and expensive motorcycles. You know, he ain't going to change. You know, I'm going to always have to be the one that going to have to be the breadwinner. I'm going to have to always be the one that take on the responsibility to make sure that the bills are paid. No, you cannot assume that because if you are a wife that is praying and interceding and standing in the gap, for your husband and his and his addictions and his habits and his spending, you got to know that in due time that God is going to do a work in his life. So you cannot assume that because he's always been that way, that he's going to continue to be that way. Because when we start accepting that myth as truth, then you're going to experience feelings of hopelessness in your marriage. And so you have to understand people change their behaviors all the time. So, so you cannot be stuck in a myth that says he's been this way. We've been married for 25 years and he's been this way. And I don't believe that he's going to change. You got to get rid of that myth and you got to begin to grab hold to the truth of God's word that says that God can bring transformation to whomever he desires to, to whomever he, when, whenever he gets ready. So on tonight, the third myth, the number three, is that in a troubled marriage, I only have two options to either, you know, resigning myself to a life of misery or getting out of the marriage. 
you know, and those of us who are watching on tonight, who believe this myth, you, you are limiting, you know, uh, you, you're limiting your marriage when you believe that either I'm going to be, I'm going to stay in it and be miserable or either I'm going to get out of it. You know, you're limiting yourself because then you become a prisoner of choice, you know, and thousands of people live in self-made prisons because they believe this myth of limited choices. You know, well, either I got to, either I'm going to be miserable in this thing or either I'm going to get out of it. You know, either I'm going to leave and I'm going to get out of it. No, you don't have to be. Because when you begin to get outside of yourself and say to yourself, you know, I, I, he may not be changing, but I'm going to take my focus off of him and I'm going to focus in inwardly on myself. And as I'm focusing in inwardly, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to show me what I need to do, what kind of strategy I need to be able to live in this marriage and still be peace and still maintain my peace and still maintain my joy and still maintain an attitude of gratitude to God. We got to get out of this thing that's saying, well, oh, either I'm going to be, I'm going to stay in it and be miserable, or either I'm going to get out of it. Them the only two choices I got. No, that, that, those are not the only two choices that you have. So do not let yourself believe that you only have two options in a desperate marriage. Don't simply settle for misery or divorce because you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to accept either one of those things. You know, you can begin to begin to pray and ask God to begin to shift you to a place to where, you know, you take your eyes off of what he's doing. So therefore you're not aggravated and you're not so frustrated to the point to where you're ready to pack up and go. And so myth number four on tonight is some situations are hopeless and my situation are one of those. You know, a lot of times we, instead of us thriving in our marriages, many of us are in there and we, we're just basically surviving because we believe that, you know, our marriage is hopeless. And not only do we believe that it's hopeless, but, you know, you'd be like, you know, huh, forget about it. You know, I, I, I'm just going to go with the flow. Right? At this point, I'm just going to go with the flow. That's what many of us are saying. But you cannot accept this myth. You know, perhaps there is hope for, you know, your marriage, because I know that there is. And many times we'd be like, well, it may be hope for theirs, but there ain't no hope for mine, you know, but because the hurt is too deep, you know, the pain is, you know, it, it's just too much. It's just too much that that's been done. You know, I can't forgive. I can't get over it. That type of thinking literally leads to depression and sometimes even, God forbid, even suicide. Because we feel like, you know, we're, we're stuck and that there's no way out. And we're trying to figure out how do we get out of this thing. But we got to get into a place on tonight, you know, you know, because many of us have struggled in our marriages for many years. And, and you know, we feel that that nothing that we've tried to do is working. And you may even have people to tell you, child, you need to go and get up out of there because. You know, that's hopeless. You know, that that's a mess. It's just hopeless. But don't let yourself believe that on tonight because your marriage is not beyond hope. Your marriage is valuable. Your marriage is important to God. And, and so what we got to begin to do is get, get the thinking out of our head because, you know, a lot of times we sit and we think, well, I'm just going to walk away. What, well, you know, why not just walk away from it? You know, yeah, I've been miserable in it, you know, ain't, ain't nothing to it. Why not just walk away? Well, you, you cannot lo no longer, you know, allow the enemy to hold you hostage, even in your thinking processes. When you start thinking like that, you got to call that thought to become captive. You cannot allow that thought to exalt itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, because many of us think, well, you know, if I can just, you know, get in another relationship and if I could just find me somebody else, child, you know, that's going to love me the way I deserve to be loved. You know, I'd rather just walk away from this thing and just start over. But the reality of it is, why would you? You know, I, I've known couples that, that have walked away from their marriage and, 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 and the wife has walked away and, and ended up with worse than what she walked away from, you know, because everybody is a work in progress. You know, 
the, the person that you think that, that 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 may be better for you than the husband that you have right now, you know, you you on the outside looking in. And then when you get over there with him, you're going to realize that, oh, he got more, oh, he got more issues than what I left. I might as well go on back to my husband. No, you might as well stay. And then as you stay, begin to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, reveal to me, give me strategy, show me what I need to do to be able to be an influence to my husband. Show me what I need to be able to do because many times, the reason why sometimes our husbands don't change is because of us. You know, sometimes we can be so critical. Sometimes we can say demeaning things to our husbands. You know, sometimes we can just treat them as if, you know, they just, there's no hope for them, you know. When many a times what they're really wanting is just, you know, if my wife would just believe in me, if my wife would just encourage me, if she would just affirm me in some things, you know, and, and, and many a time you would begin to see change just, just through doing those little things, you know, but when there's other things that's going on and we're going to, as I said, um, for the next four or five weeks, we're going to be on this same topic of loving my spouse when you feel like walking away. And we're going to deal with some real life issues that's going on in marriages. I don't, I'm not going to go into anything else on tonight because each session, I really want to take the time to really break down different addictions and, and different sins, you know, that I, some of our husbands participate in. So I can kind of give you some strategy to show you how to deal with each situation to keep you in a place to where you don't feel like you just got two options. You know, well, I'm going to stay in it, but I'm going to be miserable or I'm going to leave. Those are not your only options when it comes down um, to marriage. And so on tonight, you know, there are many of us, once again, that's even watching this video on tonight. And you're like, do I stay or, you know, or, or do I go? And I want to encourage you to give me the next five Mondays of your time and make sure that you're on here at seven o'clock on Mondays and just begin to listen in and allow the Holy Spirit just to begin to give you some strategy and some reasons why it's so important that you do stay. You know, and I'm not telling anybody that's in an abusive situation to stay. But what I am going to do for those of you that are experiencing type, different types of abuse, whether it's, you know, emotional, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whatever it may be, I am going to give you some strategy throughout these next Mondays to help you to know what to do when you're in a situation like that. Not going to encourage you to stay but just give you strategy to show you, you know, what to do if that's what's taking place in your life. But on tonight, I just want, before I get off of here, I just want to encourage every wife that is, that that's watching this video or that will watch, you know, the replay, you know, much later on. I just want to encourage you on tonight to know that sometimes marriage can be very hard. You know, there are things that, that we go through, you know, we get married and we're thinking that, you know, we're getting ready to enter into some of the best days of our life. And for some of us, you know, we enter into some of the hardest struggles, you know, but none of the things that you are experiencing in your marriage, none of it catches God off guard. You know, he already knew the day that you stood at that altar and said, I do, that there were going to be some struggles, that there were going to be some things that you were going to have to deal with in your marriage. But you got to understand that God has already graced you to be able to deal with the different things that you will experience in your marriage. So I just want to encourage you on tonight to know that your marriage is not hopeless. You don't have to give up. You don't have to throw in the towel because God can begin to cause all things to work together for your good because you love him and you are called according to his purpose, his divine purpose in the earth. So I just want to encourage you on tonight to be encouraged. Be encouraged. Stand still. 
in your marriage and just pray and seek God because it's not hopeless. It's, it, there's hope. If, if, you're, if you're alive and breathing, there's always hope. So I just want to encourage you on tonight to know that whatever you, you may be struggling with, that God has already given you a level of grace to be able to deal with that particular struggle in your life. And I just want to encourage you on tonight to keep moving forward, to keep praying, to keep seeking the face of God, to keep reading your word and stay in a place to where you can hear the voice of the Lord until God moves in your marriage. And so on tonight, I want to invite you all, all of you that have not already done so, I want you to go um, on this page. I'm going to put the link in the comment section on tonight. I am getting ready to do a 30 day, 30 ways um, to taking your love for your husband to another level in God, to another, taking your marriage to another level in God, your love for your husband to another level in God. So if you haven't already registered, I want you to click on the link in the comment section and go ahead on and register because it's going to be a power pack 30 days of teaching about love and how we can better love our husbands. It's going to be a 30 day challenge, 30 days, 30 ways to love your husband better. If you have not already registered, click on the link. It's only $20. For 30 days, for 30 days, you know, of power pack teaching that's going to that's going to literally um, counterport you to another place, catapult you to another place in your marriage. So if you haven't done so, once again, I'm going to put the link in the comment section, click on it and register for those 30 days. And I promise you that they're going to be a blessing to your marriage. But thank you all so much for tuning in and joining with me on tonight go ahead on and like tag and share this message with some other married women that you know that's going to need to be here with us for the next four or five monday nights because this is what we're going to be talking about loving our husbands even when we feel like we want to walk away that's what we're going to be talking about for the next four or five monday so tag some wives tag some sister friends in the video and let them know that teach me how to love you global marriage ministry page is where you want to be on monday nights at seven o'clock so you can begin to get some strategy some information and revelation on how to be the wife that god is calling you to be so god bless each of you on tonight uh, it is my prayer that you all will have a great night on tonight. Uh, it's my prayer that this word on tonight has been a blessing to your marriage. And it is my prayer on tonight that you all just will begin to just simply um, go forth and just be everything in your marriage that God is literally calling for you to be as a wife. I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's frustrating sometimes. I know it's aggravating sometimes, but God instituted it and he, 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 he ordained it and he wanted it. He, he wants us to walk in love and he wants us to have marriages that work. And so once again, go down in the link in the comment section, click on it, register for the 30 days, 30 ways to love your husband. And I promise you that that series is going to be a much needed blessing to your marriage. So I am Dr. Corrine Johnson, your certified marriage and relationship coach. I pray that you all have a great evening on tonight and we will see you all if it's the will of the Lord on next Monday night as we continue this series about loving my husband even when I want to walk away. God bless you and have a great evening.